hello again this is Yulia Kasarenko you're watching why change channel in this video we will create a context model together I uh, really like context models and I hope that you will uh, use them for any project that you start because context models are a super easy and business friendly communication tool you can do it at the beginning of the project to analyze and figure out what is the context of your problem what is the context of your project organization application or an individual process you are working with this context will define different entities that interact with your process or with your application or with your organization what are the different relationships and that will help you define stakeholders plan your requirements analysis and make sure you don't miss anything important and then after you have created the first version of context model, you can use it constantly. You can use it to set up the agenda for next meeting and highlight which part of the context you're working on. You can use it for planning. And of course, you can always update it and adjust it if you miss something or if you need to make some um, changes to better reflect the reality so this stays your communication tool for the whole duration of the project so today we're going to do something really simple and just keep it light-hearted i'm going to do a context model for a daycare uh, most of us either have been a daycare or maybe had to send our kids there so you have a good idea about how daycares function so i'm going to just very make a very very simple diagram uh, right here on the screen you can watch me do it and i hope that it will give you more confidence to start using context models if you don't use them yet okay so i'm going to use a uh, lucy chart for this uh, for lucy chart if you have never used it you can create a free account and it will allow you to do a few diagrams what i like about lucy chart is um, the um, templates they have so many templates and they make it very easy to use different shapes and connect them so watch me and let's get started so here I have a blank diagram. I'm not even looking for any template because for context model, you don't really need much of a template. You just need a couple of shapes and lines. Let's uh, say again, it's not necessary um, a mandatory which one you can use in the middle. It could be an oval or a circle. You will find different variations if you search it up, but I'm gonna do an oval and I'm gonna call it daycare this is what's my main subject of this diagram daycare and its environment its context let's now consider what does daycare interact with what is part of this context it's always helpful to start thinking uh, from the end of the value chain or from the customers who are the customers of a daycare and I'm just going to use this basic rounded shape, even though it's intended for the process, but it looks really good and I don't need to go do anything fancy. So first of all, the main customer of daycare are parents and their children, right? So let's consider parents and then let's do children. Now, a good feature of um, not just Lucy chart, but many diagramming tools is ability to duplicate. So control D is your best shortcut in the world that allows you to copy and replicate a shape which then allows your diagrams to look very neat because see now you have shapes of the same size and your font is of the same size all right so daycare deals with parents and children now um what's the relationship and here again what you can do in lucid chart it's very easy to drag the line you just grab this red dot and drag it to where you want to drag it and you will have an arrow going in the right direction so parents engage with daycare of course to place their children in the daycare so parents will pay fees and in return parents receive from daycare what daycare services right so they are taking care of their children all right we, we'll probably add to it later, but let's leave it for now. Okay, so children are the customers, right? So daycare is taking care of the children. So let's just say take care of children. 
Okay, we'll come back to it. Let's just now think what else does daycare need. I'm going to duplicate my rectangle so that I have nice rectangles of the same size. First of all, uh, daycare needs a place, real estate, a location of where they will be uh, taking care of the children. So because of that, they will have a relationship with a landlord, with someone who is providing the location of the uh, real estate to the daycare. Daycare needs to feed the children. So um, let's create another box and we'll say that probably daycare will have a supplier such as a catering company that will be regularly bringing in food. Daycare of course needs staff. They hire staff to provide the service. So there's staff. And now as we think about the left side as suppliers of services to the daycare and the right side of customers let's also remember that there will be always some kind of entity that regulates that oversees any business and for daycare there is probably a licensing authority of some kind that determines whether this daycare has a right to provide services based on how it complies with all the rules. And I would also include here the health aspect because of course the health of the children is very important. So there might there must be some kind of a health agency that would be overseeing uh, daycare activities and maybe supplying again the rules or regulations or doing uh, regular checks. So let's just keep it simple. We don't need to have too much for our example. Let's just look at these, all of these entities and this context. And now let's talk about relationships. For example, daycare and landlord. So landlord, and I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna grab this red dot and drag the line. So landlord provides the uh, premises. And in return, daycare needs to pay rent. So again, I'm going to grab the red dot, draw the line, and I'll say pay rent. Let me get my line out of the way. What about catering? Daycare will probably need to place orders for food. Food orders. Catering company will provide food. And I'm going maybe to just delete my verbs here and just focus on nouns, rent, premises, and so on. All right. What about stuff? Let's talk about stuff. Let me just organize this better. Stuff, of course, provides the expertise to do the job, and in return, they get paid. I'm going to grab the red dot, create another line, and I'll say child care service and daycare in return pays wages. Okay. Let me now organize it a little better so that you can see. Okay. 
So now we have licensing authority and health agency. First of all, uh, we need a license from the licensing authority. So this is this is what licensing authority provides. Let me get this arrow out of the way. And then daycare to keep the license may need to provide some kind of uh, reporting or paperwork to the licensing authority. So I'm going to say paperwork. This may not be the most professional word, but it's you know this is how you can start. And you can drag your label up. Just kind of drag this label down. And a limit also, and you can do that in a context model. You can do multiple arrows if you'd like. So let me do another arrow here and say that daycare also provides reports as defined by licensing authority reports. Okay. So now health agency, let me get parents a little bit down here. And let's talk about health agency. So very similarly, health agency may provide, first of all, rules certain rules that the daycare has to comply with. For example, during COVID pandemic, health agencies provided COVID related rules. And a daycare may also be compliant. To be compliant needs to um, allow for some inspections. So perhaps the daycare would in return provide inspection responses. So if an inspector comes in from health agency, the agency will give them all the information required. So this is just the very, very basic diagram very basic context model. Imagine you've created it in your discussion with stakeholders. Now you can say, well, what else? What are we missing? Anything else between landlord and daycare? Anything else between catering and daycare? What about daycare and parents? For example, you will say, well, daycare doesn't just provide daycare service to parents. Daycare would also provide reports to tell us about children's success how well are they doing let's do another line and let's see here progress reports and there is another thing that daycare does for parents and that's events that's all of those celebrations that showcase to parents how children learn to sing or dance or say poems. So events is also something that daycare does for parents mostly. What else can we consider? Let's just say that staff also needs to provide daycare with the information about their certifications and maybe their first aid um, training, etc. So we'll say that staff also provides training and certification documentation. We could continue, of course, but uh, this is probably good enough to illustrate what a context model may look like. It will show us in these arrows what are the main movements of information or something physical or something that characterizes the relationship between these entities. And now if you think about how we can use this context model, imagine that you are working with a new client who wants to create a, who wants to create a digital daycare. So an application to help um, automate some of the daycare uh, operations. From this context model, you can now start discussing with your stakeholders. What are the different components of the projects? What stakeholders 
we need to talk with what uh, of these enti which of these entities and their relationships could be in scope for your future solution for example does your solution need to uh, help manage relationship with landlord and that might include keeping track of the rents or keeping track of various issues with with the premises which is something we could add here for example complaints and repairs what about catering would we want our solution to allow us to capture for example how many children are in today and do they have any dietary restrictions and send that information to the catering company and then in return perhaps receive some notifications and information about when the food is coming and if there are any delays that could be another arrow in this context model right from catering to daycare what about parents uh, do we want to allow parents to have a, some kind of an portal where they can see what's happening at the daycare maybe they can register for events or they can receive progress report reports uh, digitally what about the health agency do we want to uh, keep track of some of our interaction with the health agency in our solution what about staff uh, perhaps timesheets or payroll or information about our staff recent certifications is that part of the scope so you can use this context model to start discussing the scope potentially what is needed what is most urgent what is a top priority and then the arrows are going to start giving you ideas about different research and discovery you need to do to understand better the needs of the daycare its business requirements various processes involved and that's how you will build your business analysis plan and how you will conduct your requirements analysis. Further on, of course, you can use the same context model improved and with more detail to do your uh, solution design planning, to do your task planning, implementation, communication, because each of these entities will probably need to receive some communication as you're going through your project and so on and so forth. Without going too much into that, hopefully I gave you enough of the illustration to show the usefulness of this model and it's very easy to understand. It's very easy to explain uh, what are you doing, use business terminology, make sure you use correct terms and use it to be always in touch with your stakeholders and know what's happening on your project. Thank you for watching. We'll do some more context models in the next videos. Take care. Bye-bye.